Hello, Fifth Avenue, and happy holidays. A couple quick announcements before we get rolling with the message this morning. Again, if you will uh, find your way to the website, which hopefully you have done from time to time, you will find information there. We're trying to get onto the front page of our website, but you may need to navigate a little bit by clicking on our calendar and events to find information on Angel Tree. And those of you that have been involved with Angel Tree in the past, know that it's a tremendous way to uh, connect with and minister to families that have somebody incarcerated. And so there are a number of tags. It's very easy this year to just simply uh, provide uh, a $20 gift, and that will provide a Walmart uh, gift card and a couple of dollars for uh, some administrative overhead. And we will be able to minister to a lot of families that way. That way, Pastor Joel also has a, a series for Advent called Pause for Advent that you will find on our website as well and encourage you to take advantage of that. You can also go to our Facebook uh, page and you can find all of this information there as well. Today begins a three-part, uh, kind of three glimpses of Christmas that uh, three of us are going to be sharing. Uh, I will be sharing today, then Lindsay uh, Robinson next week, and then Pastor Tim for uh, the, the Sunday just prior to Christmas on December 30th. So as parents, we're going we're to talk about the perfect gift today. And uh, as parents, we kill ourselves, don't we, to try and find that perfect gift for our kids. Perhaps you remember the uh, movie by uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Jingle All the Way. If not, there is Netflix for that. But uh, what, a, what a fun uh, romp that was of tackling in order to get that last toy that your kids just have to have. Of course, things have changed a lot since back in the day for me when we were fighting over Tickle Me Elmos and iPods and Xboxes. Or most memorably for me and my family, when my kids were young, just had to have a LeBron James Cleveland Cavaliers jersey, go figure. And uh, I traveled an hour and a half away to Portland's Lloyd Center and was happy to do so, an hour and a half each way, because I could put my hands on the LeBron James jersey. It was the only place in the state of Oregon that they still had it. But it was worth it. My wife laughed at me on the way uh, out the door and back. But I was the one laughing when my kids opened their packages that year. Or that most memorable moment for the Anderson family where uh, we gave our boys Max the uh, all-black uh, dachshund. That was a most memorable Christmas. But of course things, as I mentioned, are a lot different in our day and age. Uh, now it's baby's first iPhone. Uh, because, of course, we've got to be able to track uh, our kids from the moment uh, that they arrive. So baby's first iPhone or the gaming systems that are so different from the Galaxian and the Asteroids that I used to play in my youth and most notably Ms. Pac-Man. Now these gaming systems are truly mind-blowing. Uh, for me, it was like a little handheld electronic football game where there's just little, you know, uh, electronic dots that you're moving around the screen. In fact, I just read this last week that the gaming industry for the last 10 years running has had more annual revenue than Hollywood and the entire music industry combined. So that is a world that I just do not know a whole lot about. But whatever uh, gift you're going to be tackling somebody in the aisles for or tackling them digitally, uh, virtually online, uh, it's all worth it for those magic moments. Now, speaking gifts, I want to share a message this morning or, this morning or evening whenever you happen to be listening to the broadcast that I... Uh, Remember from my youth pastor way back in the day. Yes, I was actually paying attention this time. And uh, full disclosure, confession time, uh, I have stolen the outline and the punchline. And for the record, I would do it again. Uh, but it's seriously one of the best Christmas images I have ever come across. And it's also some terrific Christmas theology as well, which as some of you know is the land I've been hanging out in. Uh, quite a bit these days. But before you tune out, let's quickly get to it. The question is today, how do you wrap an indescribable gift? And on the screen, you're going to see the uh, passage from 2 Corinthians 9, 
where the Apostle Paul is saying in prayer, thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. So how do you wrap such an indescribable gift? And I want to thank Pastor Tim for his assistance in uh, helping me. He's one of the few guys that I know that doesn't need a lot of assistance uh, called in in order to wrap a uh, box. But we'll open it in just a minute. But let's talk about the aspects of this indescribable gift. First of all, the box of prophecy. The box of prophecy. It's often been said, don't put God in a box, which is generally good advice because we don't want to limit God and who he is and what he can do. But when it came to prophecy, God himself put himself into a box. And why would he do that? Not to limit himself in any way in what he can do, but so that there would be no mistaking Messiah. It's an absolutely clear revelation of who the Messiah is and some details that we're going to look at uh, here. So there's no way that we can not recognize him. So a number of scriptures are going to come up onto the screen here. Uh, the first one coming from Isaiah 7, which talks about him being born of a virgin and being called Emmanuel. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call his name Emmanuel. Then Isaiah 9, and as I'm reading this, you can sing along with your own Messiah if you wish, but answering who he is, what he does, and whose line he comes from. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Next from Micah 5 2 where scripture clearly declares again hundreds sometimes thousands of years earlier these prophecies were given that the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem. But you Bethlehem Ephrathah though you are small among the clans of Judah out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel whose origins are from of old and from ancient times. Next, from Psalm 72, the fact that he would be presented with gifts. The kings of Tarshish and of distant shores will bring tribute to him. The kings of Sheba and Seba will present him with gifts. All kings will bow down to him, and all nations will serve him. Next, Zechariah 9, regarding the triumphal entry. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout daughter of Jerusalem, see your king comes to you righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey, which we know happened on Palm Sunday. Uh, Zechariah 11, that he was sold for 30 pieces of silver. If you think it best, give me my pay, but if not, keep it. So they paid me 30 pieces of silver. Again, all in Old Testament prophetic scripture uh, years in advance. That his side would be pierced. I will pour out on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem a spirit of grace and supplication. They will look on me, the one they have pierced, and they will mourn for him as one mourns for an only child and grieve bitterly uh, for him as one grieves for a firstborn son. Now, in the Old Testament scripture, prophetically, there are 60 major messianic prophecies that are all directly fulfilled in Jesus. We've looked at just about eight of them. Um, and the probability of just one person, again, hundreds of years, sometimes thousands of years later, uh, fulfilling just eight of those 60 prophecies is the probability of one in 10 to the 17th power. Now, to illustrate that, I just happen to have in my pocket some, uh, uh, some pieces of silver, all right? Some uh, uh, some silver uh, dollars, and Josh McDowell has an illustration in his book, Evidence That Demands a Verdict, that says if you were to take uh, silver dollars like this and you were to spread them over the entire state of Texas about knee deep, all throughout the state of Texas, and you were to pick up one of those and mark it 
and put it into the pile and mix that entire uh, batch over the state of Texas and reach down and grab one, just grabbing that one would be the same as the probability of one in 10 to the 17th power. But now if you have one person fulfilling all 60 of those, it's now one in 10 to the 157th power. So God was saying through these prophecies fulfilled in the Messiah that there is absolutely no doubt who it is, but yet there are still some of those that missed it. The box of prophecy. Next, it's the wrapping of human nature. John 1 verses 1 and 14 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Or I love how the message translates verse 14. He moved in to the neighborhood. God himself came. Jesus came, not a book. And it's, we call it the incarnation. One of my favorite theological subjects of them all is the incarnation. And it is a tremendous Mystery, perhaps no greater mystery than fully God and fully man. Uh, it's that ultimate intersection of dirt and divinity. Pastor Tim has said it this way We believe in Jesus, the Son, the perfect embodiment of God on earth, the one who squeezed into skin to show us what God is like. Jesus himself is what God has to say to us. Now, if you're a Pandora lover like I am during this time of year, I've got a recommendation for you, and uh, that is to go to like a Paul Cardall station. Uh, don't go to Brenda Lee and listen to Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree. If I have to hear Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree out of its natural habitat one more time, I am going to go crazy just hear it every time they light a tree. And what is its natural habitat? Well, of course, it's that famous scene from Home Alone. That's the only place that we allow that song. Otherwise, you need some real Christmas music. Michael W. Smith, Paul Cardall, John Schmidt, you are welcome. Now, one of the songs that you will hear uh, on those stations is uh, one of my favorite groups from yesteryear, and it's the group For Him. And when you Google them, you might see a little bit of 80s or 90s hair. But one of my all-time favorite Christmas songs is the song, It's a Such a Strange Way to Save the World. And in the voice of Joseph, such incredible lyrics, I'm sure Joseph's talking about Joseph. He must have been surprised at where this road had taken him because never in a million lives would he have dreamed of Bethlehem. And standing at the manger, he saw with his own eyes the message from the angel come to life. And Joseph said, why me? I'm just a simple man of trade. Why him with all the rulers in the world? Why here inside this stable filled with hay? And why her? She's just an ordinary girl. Now I'm not one to second guess what angels have to say, but this is such a strange way to save the world. And it was a strange way indeed, for the king of the universe to come, but come he did. And at the end of uh, this message, I will treat you to that song that I love so much. Third, and finally, the ribbon of the resurrection. Ribbon is the key to opening the entire package, just like the resurrection is the key to the entire gospel message. In fact, the whole message, scripture says, unravels without it. We need to have a stone-centered faith, not just a cross-centered faith. Just kind of like, you know, back to the coin, kind of that two sides of a, of a Super Bowl coin. They oftentimes have that commemorative edition. When we think in terms of our Super Bowl coin, uh, it's the resurrection on one side, it's the crucifixion on the other. Of course, you can't have one without the other. But if you only have the crucifixion, Scripture says we have no hope. We have no reason for our faith. We have no foundation for our faith. We have no reality to our faith without the resurrection. But Scripture says, again, 
if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, you're still in your sins. Those who have fallen asleep, who have died in Christ, are lost. If not, if only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are to be pitied more than all men. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of all those who have fallen asleep. Again, Josh McDowell, one of my great heroes, talks about uh, in one of his books that when it comes to Jesus, there's really only three options. He's either a liar, he knew that what he was saying was false all along, or he was a lunatic. He didn't know it, but it still was false. false. Or he was Lord. It's all true, every word, every promise, because of the resurrection. He's a madman or he's a liar if the resurrection didn't happen because he said it would on the third day, and it did. So we can now hang on every word and every promise that's come out of his mouth. Regarding mystery, here is another mystery as it continues in 1 Corinthians 15, the great resurrection chapter. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We'll not all sleep, but we'll be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an, of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality. And when the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor is not in vain. And there is our hope for a pandemic and post-pandemic world. Jesus himself was raised from death to life as the first fruits of all of us that are going to follow being raised to newness of life. So let's get to the gift. What is this indescribable gift that God has given to us? Again, we've got the box of prophecy, God putting himself in a box so there's no way we could miss who the Messiah really is. It's the wrapping of human nature, the incarnation, the fully God yet fully man, the, the ultimate example of the dirt and the divine. And then there's the ribbon of the resurrection. Again, the key to the whole package. Got my ho, ho, ho uh, ribbon here that we'll take off first. We will uh, take off the wrapping of human nature here. My grandpa used to open packages with his pocket knife so they could reuse paper. Uh, you can never reuse the paper even for stocking stuffers once I get done with it. And uh, we get the uh, box of prophecy and what do we get the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us now be careful again god did not literally send a book of course but he did send the eternal word of god to us god became flesh god himself came he didn't just send news he came himself so why did he come and what's so great about this gift? Again, on the screen from Luke 4 and Matthew 11. The Spirit of the Lord is on me, Jesus said, because he's anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners, recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And I say, let 2021 be the year of the Lord's favor. Amen. In Matthew 11, when Jesus heard in prison, when John rather heard in prison what Christ was doing, he sent his disciples to ask him, are you the one who was to come or should we expect someone else? And Jesus replied, go back and report to John what you hear and what you see. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cured, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is preached to the poor. That is why he came. That is why he moved into the neighborhood and we have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only full of grace and truth. So what is our response? Our response is simply the same as the humble shepherds 
who surely uh, may and initially uh, perhaps uttered a few choice four-letter words. So in that spirit, what are the four-letter words that we can do just like the shepherds? First of all, look. Again, you can't miss it. You can't miss that Jesus is the Messiah. You can do what I just did and open. Don't ignore the doorbell. It's not Amazon. It's him. And sing. We can join the angel chorus. The shepherds probably joined on the second verse. Probably not on the first one because they were so blown away. But we can sing to a world without hope. We can dance too. But dance is a five-letter word. So let's pray. Jesus... We are never the same because we know you. And we're never the same because you came. And today we pause to recognize that you are Messiah. You are everything that scripture declares you to be thousands of years before you came and now a couple of thousand years later. You are the Prince of Peace. You are the Mighty God. You are the Everlasting Father. You are Messiah and you are king and we crown you as that once again during this advent season and pray that the gift of peace and the gift of joy will be ours as we await expectantly the end of 2020 but even more so as we wait in expectancy for your soon return we pray in Jesus name amen again Merry Christmas everybody I hope you enjoy this uh, video from my favorite country group Rascal Flats as they do a remake of It's Such a Strange Way to Save the World. And we'll see you again next week. I'm sure it must have been surprised where this road had taken him Cause never in a million lives Would he have dreamed of Bethlehem And standing at the manger He saw with his own eyes The message from the angel come to life and Joseph said, oh, I'm, I'm just a simple man of trade. Why him with all the rulers in the world? Why him inside this stable filled with hay? Why her? She's just an ordinary girl. as he deserved mm -hmm. Pulled up in the Bethlehem No lowly shepherds at his birth But Joseph knew the reason Love had to reach so far And as he held the Savior in his arms must have thought by me I'm just a simple man of trade Why him with all the rulers in the world Oh, why him Inside this stable filled with hay Why her? She's just an ordinary girl